hi guys thank you for watching welcome to today's video and to my channel if you're new here i'm debbie if you don't know me today's video as you know from the title is going to be a three looks one palette with this palette the latte 2 by dominique cosmetics i've already done a first impressions on this palette where i did a very neutral classic kind of look but i just wanted to get a bit more creative with it and show the versatility of the palette and to use some of these colours because there's some beautiful colours in here in perhaps a way that people that buy this that are into neutral makeup might not think to do so I hope you're going to enjoy it but as I say there's three very different looks in here look one has got blonde roast as the focus look two has got strawberry milk and then the third look which I'm wearing now has got matcha as the focus but I have used all the shades whilst creating these looks so I've formed a really good opinion now of what I think of them you're going to see the three looks and then at the end I'll give you my full review of, of all the shades and what I think of the palette overall and who I would recommend it for. So if you're just interested in the review I'll leave a timestamp down below so that you can jump ahead to that. But without further ado let's jump straight into look number one. Okay, for look number one I want to take Blonde Roast as my crease colour and kind of the emphasis of my look. So I'm going to start with that. I do want to bring in strawberry milk as well I think and then one of the shimmers but I'm going to keep things quite light and airy probably a cut crease as well just to really make those shimmers really pop so that's kind of what I'm feeling for look number one so I'm going to take blonde roast and I'm going to put that in the inner part of my crease and I'm going to build that up just slightly above my natural crease line so that when I cut the crease you'll still see plenty of that shade there Quite a soft, subtle shade. Pretty though. I'm not worrying too much if I get this onto my lids, which I am doing because these are pretty powdery. I think I want to take that a bit further, so a bit more towards the centre actually. I'm using a Sigma E45. Not my favourite for blending really. I find it good for getting into the crease but then blending this high up is not so easy but I need to wash my brushes so we're, we're making do with what we have. I'll probably get through more brushes in a eye look than anyone else I know, probably average of about 10 brushes per eye look which is crazy and then I like to wash them every time so that's a lot of brush washing in a week. Alright, it's messy in the corners but I'll sort that out but that's the general wash of the colour down. Then I'm going into strawberry milk and I'm going to continue that line and sort of wing it out a little bit as well. Oh, now that's a pretty colour. I'm not going to connect that with my lower lid because I'm going to attempt to do a full cut crease. I say attempt because whenever I try that it's never the best so but I'm determined to show my progress to you with that on camera and to improve on it inspire you to have a go if you're struggling to do it as well I think it is one of the more difficult things to do in makeup loving that strawberry milk that's so pretty and it blends really nicely with that blonde roast as well which I wasn't sure if it would Okay, I'm going to cut my crease now with Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer and my cut crease brush from Sigma and pray for me that I can manage to do it. I really love how a full cut crease looks, I'm determined to, to be able to do it one day. If it doesn't work out then I'll turn it into a half cut crease but we'll have a go. I'm not really able to talk while I'm doing this so I'll uh, play you some music and speed through the footage so that you can see what I did. I 
So far so good I think. Now for the other eye. And it's not perfect, but it's not too bad, I don't think. So, uh, quite happy with that. So, I'm going to now fill in my lids with the shimmers. And I've not used drizzle yet, so I think I'm going to use drizzle as kind of my my main colour. Might go drizzle on the inner part and frappe on the outer part as I go up towards the, the pink shade. Just at the top of that cut crease, I'm being careful to... Use quite a precise brush there to try and keep the line that I've made. So this one's the Linda Halberg 301. Pretty subtle shimmer, it's not really giving me too much of a pop, but it's pretty. And I'm moving into Frappe, the lighter shimmer, just as I get out more towards my outer part of my eye. Definitely having to spray these shimmers to get any sort of payoff really. Just want to clean up the line of that cut crease and intensify it a little bit. So I'm going to take blonde roast again to do that and then strawberry milk. For a bit of brow bone highlight I'm going to take Frothy, I'm just focusing that on the outer part of my brow just above the strawberry milk shade. To really shape the line of that cut I'm going to go in with a heavy metal glitter liner from Urban Decay, this one's Volume. So I want now to go in with a bit of a soft shadow liner. I'm going to use Cafecito to do that. And I've got a Linda Halberg 333 brush. So I'm just going to map out the shape of where I want the liner to be first. I think I need to take that a little bit, let's get that a little bit more on a, a slant than what I've got it. That's better. Taking my time just to fill in that wing to perfect it and get it how I want it to look. But the good thing with a shadow liner is that I got the 
angle wrong initially, but you can wipe it away. Whereas if you did that with a liquid liner, you pretty much have a problem then. Okay, so that's one eye done. Just got to replicate it on the other eye. Okay, something along those lines. It's not completely even, but it's not too bad. For my lower lash line and waterline, I'm going to take Whipple Flash by Linda Halberg. I'm going to meet up with that wing in the corner. Well, that's still slightly movable. I'm going to blend it out with a Linda Halberg 303 just to soften that lower lash line. And then I'm going to take Strawberry Milk on that same brush and just blend underneath. I want a sort of goldy inner corner highlight and I don't think in this palette there's anything bright enough for what I want. So I'm going to go in with this which is Solar Sailor by Kaleidos. It's really just adding that little touch of interest in the inner corner but the Latte palette just doesn't have. It's got some beautiful shimmers but nothing quite as intense as that. Okay, just going to hop off for mascara and a lip and I'll be back with you to show you the finished look. Okay guys, so here's the finished look. What do you think? A little bit dramatic, quite intricate and difficult to create, but I really love how it turned out. And I think it's good to get yourself out of your normal comfort zone and try something different because it's quite a neutral palette. I think you could just do the, the simple sort of smoky eye or the sort of darker outer V and then shimmer on the lid. But I just wanted to do something a little bit different with it. And I think even though it's neutral, it's still quite eye-catching and, and striking. So I really like it. I hope you like it too. Let's move on to look number two. Okay guys, on to look number two. So for this look, I want to do a classic smoky eye, even though I said that's the obvious thing to do with this palette. Just fancy doing that today and seeing how it will turn out with these shades. So I'm going to pack a chubby stick kind of brownish taupe pencil liner all over my lids. I'm going to pack coffee beans over that and I'm going to use strawberry milk in my crease and then I might add some sparkle over the top as well. Not quite sure what I'm doing on the lower lash line but probably pretty much a smoky lower lash line with the same shades. So that's the plan for today. So to start off the look I'm using this, it's one of the pencils from Lancome, one of their chubby sort of eyeshadow sticks and it's in the shade Taupe Quartz. That shade is going all over my mobile lid just to give us a little bit of depth there. I've already primed with the Mac Painty Paint Pot because I wanted a primer in the upper part of my lid. But this is just going to give us a little bit more colour for that coffee bean shade to appear nice and opaque. But any darker coloured pencil rather than a white pencil would do the job. I did consider going in with the black pencil from NYX but I think that would make things a little bit darker than I want them to be so I think this should be perfect and I've not used that product for a while so it's good to rotate things from your collection I think. So next I'm going to go in with my crease shade because it will make it easier to blend that cocoa beans into that. So I'm going to go in with strawberry milk, a nice fluffy brush which is the Morphe M573 but any fluffy brush will do the job and I'm just going to build up that crease colour. I loved this shade when I used it in the previous look so I just wanted to make it more of a focus in a look and I think it will give an interesting effect to this smoky eye so I'm going to really diffuse this out and work the product from left to right windscreen wiper motions 
and keeping a, a rounded shape so we don't want this one winged out at all. Just so difficult for me to, to control, I'm ready to, to do that because I love my winged out shapes but I think for a smoky eye you want to keep it in a rounded shape if you can. I'm dipping a few times into the shade because I really want it quite intense and pretty much up to my brow. It's blending super easily, it's a really really pretty shade. Same thing on the other eye. These Morphe brushes by the way are from the James Charles set and they are pretty scratchy still. I need to, to wash them a few more times and use some conditioner on them, that's my top tip for those. But they don't half get the, the blending job done. They're really, I think because they're a little bit more spiky, I don't know if it's the word you say, they do hurt a little bit on your eyes. I feel like they're sort of stabbing you a little bit, but they really diffuse that product well, so maybe that's why they have to be that way, I don't know. They're not the softest, but they're doing the job. I'm also going to take strawberry milk on my lower lash line. I'll just swap to uh, Spectrum A12 just to get a bit closer and to not fuff too much powder into my eyes. I'm going to go in with a firm shade E57 brush now. I wanted a nice solid packing brush to put the shade on my lids. And as I say, I'm going to go in with coffee beans to do that. I'm just going to pack that everywhere we've put that pencil. Just in packing kind of motions. Try and get as much payoff from that shade as we can. So at this stage I'm not worrying about blending this out, I'm just packing on the colour. I'm pretty much taking that above my natural crease line so that when I blend it you can see the brown shade above my my eye when my eye is open. There's a scent from this eyeshadow palette. It's like if you've ever, I'm sure you all have used at some point one of the Too Faced chocolate palettes. Or maybe you haven't, but it's not quite as strong as those, but you've got that kind of a coffee chocolate kind of scent. It's not, not horrible, it's quite nice. At the moment that looks very harsh very dense but we will be blending that out. Now I'm going to go in with Cafecito because I want something that's between the tone of the strawberry milk and the coffee bean shade to help with the blend there. And with that I'm just going to pack that in the upper part of my crease. But I'm going to start blending as well as packing so pack it down but blend as well. I think with this shade, this is when it's starting to come together and look a bit more like a smoky eye. This brush is too short for my preference, I'm running out of brush space on the end. I like to be quite a long way down on my brushes, like I don't want to hold my brush like this because you've got a lot more pressure being exerted then. And for blending I like to keep quite a light pressure. Having said that, this is a good brush though, it's the E25 from Sigma, it's just a smaller version of it. Right, so the same thing on the other eye, just repeating the same steps, so we're kind of packing that colour down, so I'm making sure I'm getting plenty of that colour in the crease, but once we've got some colour there, then we're going to start making sure we move that around and get it fully blended into the strawberry milkshade. And we will be going back to the strawberry milkshade in a moment to further perfect that blend. I think when doing a smoky eye it's definitely easier if you've got two or three shades so that you can really get that gradient going and it doesn't look like super harsh then. I'm not done a a true sort of raccoon eye like this for a long long time. Back into strawberry milk and our original brush now. I'm pretty much blending over the top of where we put that cafecito shade so we're sort of merging those together. I've 
done a smoky eye and otherwise I've done it where you start with the dark colour and then go upwards and I think just setting down that crease colour first that you've got something to blend into definitely helps to make it more seamless so now really with this brush it's just blend until your arms fall off basically so I'm gonna speed through some of the footage for that but just to show you how much blending is involved to really get that nice gradient Now I'm going to take Cafe Con Leche and I'm just going to blend that right up to my brow now. So I've got another E25. I'm just going to take that as I say right up to my brow. I'm going to use that as my blending shade so that I don't get any harsh edges sort of towards my nose here which is always where if there's going to be a harsh edge, that's where it will be for me. But really, I'm just using this shade just to diffuse the edges all the way around. My lower lash line, I really want to get coffee beans really close, so I'm going to use an E15 by Sigma, but any flat definer brush will do this job. So I just want to make sure I get that super, super close to start with. I am going to blend it out. But if I don't want this blended all the way to my cheeks, I'm going to need to be careful to keep it close to start with. So to begin with, not blending it at all, I'm just literally stamping that on. I'm also going to use a brown pencil in waterline. This is Brown Core by Linda Halberg. Right, now I want to blend that coffee beans shade into the strawberry milk shade that we laid down earlier. So using the brush that's got Cafe Con Leche on it, there's not much product left on there, so I think that'll be fine. I'll take a touch more strawberry milk just to Make sure that's visible in the look. Again, I'm going to smudge a bit more of that coffee bean shade just under my lash line. And then repeat the same step. I just want to make sure I keep it super dark, but that the blend is there as well. Okay, so that's the look to this point, and I could absolutely leave it like this, just a coat of mascara, finish the look, but I think I want to just put a little bit of glitter just in the centre of my lids. So I'm going to use the shade Frappe to do that. I'm going to use some glitter glue because yesterday, which is when I did the look number one that you've just seen, I did end up with quite a lot of glitter fallout from that Frappe shade in my eyes and had to take my contact lens out because it's very uncomfortable. So to try and stop that, because it's not a true glitter in the sense of the word, it is a shadow with some glitter in it, but I always worry about glitter particles getting in my eyes, so I'm going to make sure it sticks this time and it'll probably help it pop a bit more. So just going in with the NYX Glitter Primer for that. I literally just want that just in the centre. And I'm just going to pack frappe over the top of that glitter glue. And that is sticking a lot better by doing that. So we've always sent it up with a halo eye, but not not a full halo eye, it's just to give some interest in the middle of this smoky eye really. I'm making sure to take that a little bit into my crease as well. 
just as far up as we've got the dark shade basically until it starts to blend out into the strawberry milk shade. To stop it looking too harsh I'm going to go in with iced coffee and uh, E36 from Morphe and just blend either side with that. That's just helped to blend it in just slightly. Stop it looking like just a big stripe in the middle of my eye. Okay guys, so just gonna hop off camera for the finishing touches and I'll be right back with you to show you look number two. Okay guys, so here's the finished look for this one. And I've paired it with a studied kiss lipstick from Kat Von D. This is in the shade Lolita. And I forgot to tell you what shade I used yesterday, but it was an Anastasia liquid lip in the shade Toast. So I just remembered after I, because uh, I've edited day one of this footage and I just remembered that I didn't tell you. So, so yeah, I used Toast yesterday and I've used Lolita today. And I think this is the perfect kind of rose kind of shade that's pulling out the strawberry milk shade that's in my crease. And I really love how this looks. It's super dramatic, but in a neutral way. So who would have thought when you look at that eyeshadow palette that you can get such a dramatic look out of it? When I look at it, I just see neutrals. So, so yeah, I'm super happy with how this has come out. I don't do a smoky eye very often, and they are a kind of look that in the past I have struggled with, and I've tried lots of different techniques to perfect. So. I hope that it's been useful seeing the way that I do it. I know, as I say, again, it's nothing groundbreaking because everyone's done a smoky eye at some point or other. But I think getting that blend from the dark shade to the lighter shade is super, super difficult. So I think this is the way that I find it easiest to do now is to get that crease shade down, then the darkest shade, and then kind of create that gradient in the middle and then just blend everything. That seems to work best for me. Love to know how you guys do it if you do a smoky eye, but that's the, the easiest way for me. But that's look number two. Let's move on to look number three. Okay, look three then. So I want to use matcha as the focus of my looks, not really used it much. I want to have a little bit of a shimmer in the look. So frappe probably might be the, the shade for that and I'm going to be using some red in this look. So I'm not gonna just stick exclusively in this palette, but in terms of the red, it's just gonna be eye pencils, and I'm gonna use a green gel liner as well. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a mashup of different products, but using Matcha as my focus for the look. So I'm gonna start by priming with the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk, because that Matcha shade is pretty pale, and I wanna make sure that we can see it nice and strong, because I'm gonna be putting it pretty much all over my lids and pretty much halfway up to my brows I guess. I always find this product works the best if I want to use a matte and really get it to look vivid and to stick to my eyes. Okay, so that's the base on. Always looks a little bit crazy to start with, but definitely works well to give a punch to these kind of shadows. So I'm gonna go in now with, this is a lip brush, a 301 by Urban Decay. Just gonna use it to flick out the shape and kind of work out which way I wanna go, because this is gonna be a winged out shape. So I picked up a fair bit of matcha and I'm gonna use that to basically draw my guidelines of where I want this winged out shape to go. This is such a good brush for so many different purposes, but it's great for this kind of thing. I'm using the sort of angle of where I would come down to my lower lash line to uh, give me a guide of where I want to put that shadow. And it doesn't have to be mega precise, but it gives us like the angle of where I don't want to go any lower than so that I can keep that, that angled shape. Now I'm just gonna pack matcha all over where we put that pencil pretty much. Using a SK2 by 
so Sue by Suzanne Jackson. It's quite big but flat and fluffy, so I think it's working quite well for this purpose. And then just when I get to that line that I've made, I'm just being careful not to go below it. So I've packed that shadow down pretty heavily and I'm getting quite a good amount of pigmentation from it. Same thing on the other eye, but just having that guideline there has made it super simple just to, to know exactly where to blend out to. You could use tape to do this, you could do your eyes first and then use a makeup wipe to clean up, but I always prefer to do my face makeup first. I don't know why really, but I just that's just my preference. I just can't really envision the look quite so well if I don't have my makeup on. I don't know what it is about having your base done, but it just sort of perfects everything and makes everything come together. Right, I want to make sure I've gone up high enough because, as I say, I want this green to be the focus of my look and the good thing about this brush is it's got quite a fluffy top so when I've laid it on its side I can use it as a packing brush but the tip of it is a blending brush so it's great for this sort of purpose. So I'm just making sure I've got that pretty much as high as I want to go. So I've wiped the brush off now with a makeup towel I'm going to go into frothy and blend up to my brows. And I'm only really doing that so that we don't have that white pencil showing there. But it'll also help create that blend and make it look a lot softer. Now I'm going to go in with the Melt Gel Liner in Fortuna. Now I don't want a crazy winged out liner with this. I don't want it to cover my eye or anything. So I'm just going to use like the shape of this brush, which is an Illamasqua one I got in a set years ago. But it's just the right shape and size to just stamp on that product to get it where I want it. So that's about as high and as far as I want that, that liner to go. I'm also going to use the angle of that brush to bring that wing back in. It's not perfect, but now I'm going to swap brushes to the E05 from Sigma so that I can have a bit more control to create that wing. where it always gets tricky for me where the fold of my eye is the the wings ended up a little bit bigger than I wanted it to but that's fine I think that's about the best I'm going to get it. So I'm just going to quickly do the other one. Okay, that's the wings on. A little bit bigger than I intended. And I've had to clean up slightly underneath with some concealer. But, but I think they're even now and they look okay. So what I'm going to do is take a green pencil quite low down in my lower lash line. And then in my water line, I'm going to take a red. So never done this before. So this could be interesting. But we're going in with Calm Mood first and I'm going to make that meet up with that wing. But I'm being careful to not take that into my waterline, so just on my lower lash line. I have to move pretty quickly to swatch that out. So I've got a Linda Halberg 303. I'm just going to smudge that pencil because that's going to be the base for the matcha shade on my lower lash line. And now using that same brush, I'm going to go back into that matcha shade. 
and just blend that out on the lower lash line. But we've deliberately left the waterline because I'm going to use red there. So in my waterline I'm going to use Anger Mood, the only red pencil I've got and it's such a good eye pencil. Okay, that's the waterline done. Now I'm gonna go in with an inner corner highlight. There's nothing in the palette really that's gonna give me that pop in the inner corner that I want. So I'm gonna go in with a Kaleidos highlight. This is Laser Glazer, and it's a beautiful, beautiful inner corner highlight or even a lid shade as well as being a highlighter. So I'm just gonna spray that with Fix Plus. I'm just going to pack that in my inner corner. So, so pretty as an inner corner highlight. This is how I use this shade, or packed over a lid shade can look really pretty. I've used it over green for a Christmas look. What I wanted with this look is not to make it look like a Christmas look, but probably will end up that way in the end because it's red and green, but that's super super pretty as an inner corner highlight so i'm going to pop off camera now for mascara and lips and i'll be right back with you to show you the finished look for look number three okay guys so here's the finished look for look number three and as i've got a red waterline and red earrings and a little bit of red in my shirt what's a girl to do i've got to wear a red lipstick any excuse you know me but this is a Kaleidos Makeup Lip Tonic and it's in the shade Ambition. Just think it goes perfectly with the look. And you wouldn't necessarily think to pair like this matcha green shade with red, but I think it really, really works. I love how this has turned out. I was super inspired by Lacey from Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. She wore a very similar look in one of her videos recently where she got this red waterline with green shadow and I just thought it looked so pretty I wanted to create something similar so that's the inspo for that one so my thoughts then on the palette because I've used every shade now so matcha absolutely love the shade of this one I think it goes on super opaque particularly over that white base but I think you could use it more subtly like on a lower lash line or just bring some interest to a pretty neutral look I also really liked Blonde Rose for the same reason. It gives you that sort of grungy, sort of yellowy vibe to a look. I think my favourite matte though in the palette is Strawberry Milk for sure. I just love the tone of that in look number two. And the other mattes, no problems at all with. They're just not standout shades for me. They're the sort of shades that you, you blend or you use as a brow bone highlight, but they work perfectly well for that. The two brown mattes then, we've got Coffee Beans and Cappuccino. I think they're quite similar in tone to one another or, you know, in depth and intensity anyway, with Cappuccino being a lot warmer of a shade. But it did work really well in look number two to get that gradient, you know, between the that one being the deepest and the strawberry milk being the lightest and having that one to sort of bridge the gap as such so i think there's a reason for them all to be there i think this one could have been maybe slightly lighter and it would have given you a bit more range but but i do like both of those and i wore that look yesterday the smoky eye and it lasted all day there was no fading or anything which sometimes when i pack on a matte that's what happens but stayed super true to color both of those two so really impressed with those the shimmers then i think drizzle is super pretty it is a shimmer shade rather than like a foil shade but really nice i struggled to get it to show particularly much i think if i'd have had a bit more of a contrast like i have done a neutral look as I say outside of this video in my first impressions where I use more of the browns and I used that on the lid and it showed up more so I think it was just the way I used it in the look there's nothing wrong with that shade it's nice I think iced coffee is a beautiful tone to it and has got a little bit of sparkling it's probably my favorite of the three shimmers actually it's a little bit unusual to have like a brown shimmer like that in a palette frappe oh, I don't know about that one it's quite dry and a little bit like the little bits of glitter are loose so they'll go into your eyes if you're not careful so you get quite a lot of fallout but then if you wet your brush it doesn't become foiled it just kind of is quite chunky so 
it's pretty once you've got it on your eyes it's pretty but it's the only really light shade that you might want to use say you're in a corner but i wouldn't dare do that in case it ended up in my eyes so with glitter glue it was definitely a lot better but not my favorite shade i've ever used but it is super pretty i'm just not a fan of glitter in any way really i like my glitter to be like if it's in a shimmer i want it to be a shimmer that kind of captures that glitter and keeps it in one place a little bit more of a emollient sort of formula to it uh don't know how to describe it but like the menagerie ones where you know one swipe of the shadow the glitter stays and it looks super impactful because it's a lot more finely milled i guess so not my favorite but still looked pretty i think what this is missing is a really nice maybe duochrome inner corner highlight and i think that would have made it a lot uh, more usable for a lot of people you know a lot of people like a nice bright inner corner highlight and I didn't feel that I could use that frappe shade to do that but all in all I've had a great time with this palette really enjoyed using it and been a lot more inspired by it than than I perhaps thought I was going to be when I bought it I bought it because I got the latte one and I'm such a completionist and when they brought out a second one I thought I need to have it and I didn't think necessarily that I would enjoy it as much as I have and I really feel like it is pretty uh, versatile of a colour story while still being neutral as well so I think you know it's one of these that if you're into neutrals but you want to dip your toes into colour then I think it's got you covered because you've got some pops of colour but not scary pops but someone like me who loves colour can take those colours and, and turn them into something else like I've done today. So I think it is quite a versatile palette actually. And I'm not at all sad that I bought it. I've really had a good time as I say using it. So is it for you? Well, if you like neutrals but you just want a bit of a pop, then yes. I think if you're into super colourful makeup and you don't wear neutrals, then probably no because there's only a couple of colours in there and they're not super bright. But, but it's a good quality palette particularly the matte formula and really nice packaging really nice presentation to all of the dominique cosmetics palettes so so yeah i do recommend it but only if you are the sort of person that perhaps uses neutrals but with a bit of a color so that's my thoughts on the palette hope you enjoyed seeing the three looks and that it inspired you to create something similar maybe not even with this palette if you don't have it you can create something similar with what you have i'm sure but i'd love to know which was your favorite of the three for me it's going to be difficult for this one because for different reasons i like them all i enjoyed doing the the full cut crease i know i've still got some work to do to perfect that but I think it turned out okay and at each one that I do it's kind of improving and I did enjoy how it came out. I love the smoky eye, that's the best smoky eye I think I've done. Uh, again my blending is a work in progress and I hope you know when I'm showing you my looks you're sort of you can relate you know because I'm not a makeup artist, I've learned everything I know by watching YouTube and other people's techniques and then just playing with that and adapting it to my eye shape and you know taking bits of what each person does and kind of creating my own style and I think it's the best one I've done but it's by no means perfect so hopefully that's relatable to you guys if you're struggling with any element of makeup that you might be doing but I think I've got to say this one's my favourite because I do love a winged out shape. Did struggle a little bit to get these wings as I wanted them. I only wanted them to be a little wing and, you know, it always ends up with a massive wing with me. And I did have to clean them up a little bit with concealer. If you guys would like me to show that kind of thing. So I did struggle a little bit and off camera, whilst I was doing the other eye, I kind of put the camera off and cleaned up underneath. Do you want me to show you those sort of things where I make a mistake and how I correct that? that's interesting to me to know if you want to see that I'm always a little bit embarrassed to show it but maybe that's a good thing to show you guys that that you know we all mess up when we're doing a look I think everybody does and maybe you'd like to see that so please let me know but other than that that brings us to the end of this three looks one palette with the latte 2 by Dominique Cosmetics thank you so so much for watching if you're new here to my channel I'd love it if you consider subscribing before you go but other than that, guys, hope you're having a lovely day or night wherever you are, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!